All right, let's go ahead and hop into our game preview here. We do have the Rams and Raiders game. Uh, this actually is brought to you by uh, BetUS. So if you guys want to put some dollar dollar bills on the, <laughs> the Rams and Raiders game, make sure you guys do it. Betting on preseason is super dope, guys. All right, it's way cooler than it sounds. I promise you guys, because there's really no knowing what will happen. So it's kind of, it's like more exciting because there's like it, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Who knew that Bryce Perkins was going to do awesome? You know what I mean? So who knew that Tristan Jackson was going to score the Rams only touchdown that we weren't going to make a field goal or any kind of kick at all for that matter. So it's good stuff, guys. It's a little bit more risky, I guess. It's uh, It brings the excitement out. So uh, we do have... The Vegas Raiders at the LA Rams. This game will be on NFL Network at 7 o'clock LA time. That's Pacific time at SoFi Stadium. The Rams also do host the, the Raiders at SoFi Stadium in the 2022 season in the regular season. So uh, make sure you guys, um, I, that one's going to be a good one. Make sure you guys go to that one. All right. That's, I'm sure it's going to be a little bit crazy. I know we saw some, uh, some damages happen in the, in the stands in this last one, but those Raiders fans, man, they don't mess around. All right. So maybe everybody should just be cool and remember that this one is a preseason game and I just hope everybody has fun and tries their best. All right. It's not about winning these games. It's about getting some sweet tape on, uh, on tape, really. <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Just some game notes for you guys. Last week, the Rams versus Chargers. The Chargers won that one 13 to six. The Seahawks Played at the Raiders. The Raiders took that one 20 to 7. The Raiders did not play starters last week. Uh, the Rams and Raiders uh, will practice against each other on Wednesday and Thursday this week. Had a quick little jog through, as they called it, on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, practicing against the Raiders. Things definitely got a little bit chippy. Jalen Ramsey gave a little bit of a pop to Brandon Jacobs, and some things kind of went a little bit. I haven't seen the hit yet. Uh, you know, I, I get off work on Wednesdays and then I, uh, I sit down and record. So I haven't really seen a whole lot from the practice yet today. I will be keeping my eyeballs on that one uh, once I get uh, off of here and and uh, can can check out what actually happened for that one. But we do have a couple of joint practices. That's where the most of the work will actually be done as far as getting our team prepared for this season. Uh, the preseason game will be a lot of evaluation on the lower part of the roster here, trying to see what what parts we can trim off uh, that we'll be okay with moving on from uh, by the time that the Bears game comes around. Quarterback Nathan Peterman was the only quarterback to play for the Raiders last week. He went 29 of 39 for 246 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, was sacked four times though. So maybe Justin Lawler can uh, get after Peterman and uh, we get some good, uh, good sacks on him. Peterman on the ground at so five. That'll be a good day to see that. So, And then uh, Zay Jones also had a solid game. Three receptions on three targets for 57 yards. What should you be watching in this one? The running game will likely be a pretty big point of emphasis this week, considering the lack of uh, productivity last week against the Chargers. And Sean McVay was pretty open about that. Of uh, You know, we had some decent areas. There was a couple here and there that we kind of hit, but overall run game definitely was not uh, up to where it should should have been. So I think that that'll be a point of emphasis this week, especially considering the two quarterbacks that we're playing likely not on the roster. So Ernest Jones called the first drive on his own. That was a really interesting thing that we heard from Raheem Morris, that the communication was actually out of his headset or he was clicking the wrong button uh, to Ernest Jones. So Jones called it on his own. And of course, it was like a 10 minute drive that ended in a field goal for the Chargers. But hey, for a for a rookie to come in in his first live game action and call an entire series on his own that did not end in a touchdown. Hey, I like it. I, li I like what Ernest Jones did on that one. It's, uh, you know, for his situation and his uh, what he was put into not being able to hear his coach. I think he did a fine job, honestly. So let's see uh, how he keeps on progressing. And I want to I want to keep an eye on uh, how he starts to develop into that leadership role. Who's coming to him for for questions or, or you know what I mean? Like what kind of role is he going to start to develop as far as uh, the rest of these uh, like the def defenders go? And then uh, we actually we may actually have a real punter battle on our hands, guys. Corey Bajorquez nailed a punt. Uh, of course, Johnny did have a higher average than Bajorquez did. But uh, even though even with the touchback, but Bajorquez, man, that's that he's no joke. He's a good punter. And that's a very real thing that we need to keep an eye on these next probably two games. I think that we'll see them both in Denver. That's a good spot to try to evaluate your your kicking game just because of the, the thin air. Everybody knows that the 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 whole thing with Denver is the thin air. And that's why, like, the two longest field goals in NFL history have happened in Denver. So 
It's, it's one of the aspects that you might be able to kind of evaluate, or maybe you don't want to evaluate in Denver, but either way, I think that they both make it to that game. I don't think we see Bajorquez or Hecker get cut before that one. I would have to look at the, the penalties on the, the on if the Rams were to cut Hecker, but he is the highest paid punter in the NFL. So if we can get higher production out of Corey Bajorquez, I don't really see a reason not to, but at the same time, we're going to be under the cap anyway. We're going to be good to go. Hecker, we don't need to move on from Hecker. Uh, but it, it I, I do think that there's technically a, a, a punter battle here. And then I I also have in here, who will emerge from that wide receiver group? We had a couple of guys banged up. Skoranek banged up. Tristan Jackson banged up. So who's going to be the ones that kind of step in? Is it going to be J.J. Koski? Is it going to be somebody like uh, Landon Akers? Is it, who's going to be the one to kind of fill in that role? So I feel we feel pretty good about the five top wide receivers for the Rams. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Deshaun Jackson, Van Jefferson and Tutu Atwell. But are we going to keep six or are we going to keep seven? So who's going to emerge from that group? I'm definitely keeping an eye on that one. Speaking of that wide receiver group, we'll just do a quick re- revisit on our three to see last week. Uh, with the wide receiver group, we had Tristan Jackson scored the, the Rams only points. It was those six points off that touchdown. And then the group looked okay, but could have done more to get separation. Uh, there was a few times there where it was like, nobody's getting open, man. Like you gotta, you gotta do something, get open guys. And, uh, there was a, I just wanted to see that a little bit more. So, of course, going into a, another preseason game, that's something that I'll be keeping my eyes on. In the secondary, I like what we saw from Bronte Harris and David Alumba. Uh, both helped themselves against the Chargers, honestly. Uh, would love to have seen some more uh, press coverage. We, we saw them play off quite a bit. I don't know what necessarily went into that decision, but the, the Chargers also have a pretty deep wide receiver group, uh, so... You know, maybe that's part of it, but I would like to see just a little bit more press just just to get that evaluation in there, just to get that tape out. And then also uh, the running back group running game was overall pretty weak. Uh, there were a couple of decent plays, but nothing really stood out. Still waiting to see Otis Anderson Jr. No, I have not seen anything from it all. Um, that honestly doesn't give me a lot of confidence. Uh, I, I want to see Otis Anderson Jr., but if he's not getting reps in preseason, uh, is it because we want to get funk and... And Jones, uh, do we just want to get them some reps? Uh, what about Raymond Calais? He seems to be a special teams guy, had that awesome punt return. Uh, is Otis Anderson just kind of an odd man out? It, it kind of feels that way just a little bit, so we'll see what happens in these next couple games. Our three to see this week, though, we do have outside linebacker Justin Lawler, who has been dealing with you know a, a few injuries and stuff over the last few years. It's kind of been up and down, uh, hasn't really been able to stick, but... If you guys have been with Ram Showcase for the last few years, I mean, if, if, right after his draft, it was like, hey, man, well, this guy's got potential. And then, of course, it just was not really panning out perfectly. So uh, Justin Lawler has been hanging out on the Rams roster for the last few years. He entered his NFL career with quite, quite a bit of potential. Against the Chargers, he absolutely shined. And he got emotional about it, which is great to see as well. Uh, he showed some uh, strong emotions and... Uh, about his own performance and you, you like to see that you like to see a guy who's excited about it and you know it's it it kind of it's almost one of those things where it, I, I'm, I'm glad that he even has the opportunity to still do that uh, there's not a lot of teams that have that kind of patience with with players uh, you know two years of getting injured sometimes most teams are kind of over it at that point so he could be one of those guys that pops this season so if in the next couple of weeks he's still doing it he could be a guy that makes this roster, and and you know what? Maybe he knocks off somebody like Terrell Lewis. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying that's for sure what's going to happen. I'm not there with my predictions yet, but uh, maybe that's something that happens and, and could be an indicator that he could be a part of this team this year, and, and maybe he's a guy that, that kind of pops. Next here is cornerback Bronte Harris. Harris played really well considering the low numbers at the cornerback position against the, the Chargers for the Rams. And uh, some solid coverage, had some really great uh, open field tackles. That's one thing that I really like to see out of corners, uh, open field tackles, because sometimes you're left on an island, and if you don't tackle that guy, sometimes that's a game-changing play. So to see him be able to, to make those plays, that was really good. Um, let's see, he's uh, for, a, for a quarterback that's lower on the depth chart, you want to see the difficult tackles be made, and he was doing that. So I want to see that continue. Bronte Harris is somebody that I'll be keeping my eyeballs on as the preseason goes on. And last one here is going to be tight end Jacob Harris. No denying that, that Jacob Harris looked pretty solid. Looks like Kevin O'Connell was trying to put him in situations to get him the football, and he did flash on some plays for sure. He showed his strength and his ability to catch the football and turn it into more yards in his strength. He did break that one tackle. That was pretty sweet. 
Uh, considering it's his first preseason game, I'm excited to see how he does progress this season. Higby is under contract through the 23 season, but a new contract may not be in the cards if Harris continues on this upwards trajectory like we have been seeing. Let's go ahead and talk about some fan quesos here. Uh, fan Rams fans, thank you guys so much for making it all the way to the end of the clip. I do sincerely appreciate you guys. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys subscribe. If you have done that, or even if you haven't, go ahead and watch the full episode if you liked this clip. I guarantee you guys are going to love it. Go Rams!